Right guys, it is one of the best days for cars in America. We are at the Amelia Island Concours de Elegance and it's gonna be a wonderful day. This math is right behind me. I had seen this, I think about 2014 at the Tampa Bay Auto Museum. It's got a fascinating history, a little bit of a frustrating one. It is the only known uh, existing Mathis L333. for me to pass by a BMW I said and not do a little film on it these one cylinder uh, little precious cars that were initially designed by Renzo Revolta of Iso Spa Achevelli these are really cool I think that uh, they were licensed to seven different countries and uh, the BMW 300 I set up produces I think 13 horsepower maybe 12 horsepower but it's also kind of neat this whole weekend I've seen the Iso Griffith, I'm sorry, Iso, Iso Griffith and Iso Revolta, and those are also two cars that came out of Iso Spa. behind me is a great one. It came all the way from the Lane Motor Museum, which is in Nashville, and it's probably one of my top favorite, within my top 10 favorite car museums within the U.S. It's awesome. And this is called a Henomag. If I'm pronouncing that, I have no idea. You know, usually just read some of these words and never say them out loud. Uh, but before they created this adorable one-cylinder vehicle, they created steam-powered engine trucks. So, kind of neat. Let's take a look. Automobile is not one you see too often and my big experience with Franklin automobiles is the Franklin Motor Museum that is in Tucson you should go to that if you're around that area this is a 1934 Franklin V12 series 17 and it's in beautiful condition let's take a look hi there Oh, you're good. Now, Pierce Arrow was one of the early three P's of American luxury. Pierce Arrow, Peerless, and Packard. This 1919 Pierce Arrow is especially uh, impressive and unique in that the body was designed by Harley Earl of General Motors fame and uh, oh, it's just so nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
this 1934 LaSalle. And LaSalle was uh, birthed an ideal to become like a lower price point Cadillac. So really, any LaSalle you look at, it has every part of it is basically a Cadillac with just a different name. <laughs> bumper is kind of interesting, but my favorite name for it is the Dagmar bumper. And Dagmar at the time was a very voluptuous actress in America. And I didn't even get why. Don't you wish LeSabre's still looked like this? Now this LeSabre's probably one of my favorites done by General Motors under Harley Earl's tutelage. This is the Corvette Indy, okay? A mid-engine dream car come out uh, conceived by Tom Peters and Jeremy Palmer. Let's take a look. This is super, super futuristic for the 80s. Only 150 are still in existence. It's pretty awesome. Now the Kaiser Darren is a really cool one. And the first time I saw that was actually at Amelia Island, probably four or so years ago. And Kaiser might sound familiar. That's the same guy from Kaiser Permanente. He was pretty he was pretty dynamic. He also built boats before he moved into cars, and he also, I think, was one of the first people to provide his employees with insurance, thus ending up as Kaiser Permanente. Uh, but let's take a look. <laughs> sliding door that they have. Now the 911 Carrera RS is kind of one of those holy grail Porsches. When it came out it was intended so that Porsche could race in the uh, class 4 GT and first year it came out you saw Brumos racing with Chad Hurley Haywood and Peter Gregg. They won the 24 hours of Daytona and then later on in that year uh, Martini racing went on to win the Targa Floria. So. Well, I'm 
bunch of Stratos. It's the shit. All right, so this powered by a uh, V6 Dino engine in there. Styling done by Bertone. It really just wrecked shop in just about every rally championship in the mid 70s. This one I know took a world rally championship, 74, 75, and 76. <laughs> And uh, Bantam Car Company rose from the ashes of the American Austin Company. And by that, I mean they just bought a bankrupt building, uh, bankrupt company, created this. Fun fact about Bantam is they were also the first to develop Jeep. They, became, they created the Jeep prototype. produced some seriously beautiful Art Deco wonders. And right behind me is a breathtaking one, also hyper rare. This is a 1937-135 Torpedo Cabriolet. Only two remaining in existence. Only three actually ever made. largest amount of Lozier's I'm gonna see in one place at one time and now if you haven't heard of a Lozier that's not a big deal they're kind of rare all right they were a super luxury American car manufacturer that started in 1900 and uh, stopped in 1915 at one point in time they were the most expensive car available for purchase in the US that's pretty wild and one of my fa I always love to find out you know just the original origins of some car manufacturers. Originally, they produced sewing machines. Auburn has produced some of the most beautiful cars. One of them is, without a doubt, the Boat Tail Speedster, which you can see why it's called a Boat Tail Speedster. Uh, now, what does Auburn, Duesenberg, and Cord all have in common? They have E.L. Cord, gentleman E.L. Cord, who created the Cord, and he also ended up purchasing Auburn. spectacular 1937 Porsche 853A Sport Cabriolet. And I'm trying to remember the story correctly, but Porsche, the automobile manufacturer, was started by a gentleman with the last name of Porsche. I don't remember his first name. But he would eventually be kicked out of the his own car manufacturer, and then he would go on to make Auto Union, which would then be known as Audi. And as you can see, so it does have a auto union emblem on there still too. <laughs>
And this one's actually really special because of it, this body style, only 48 were done and 21 of them were supercharged. And usually you can, an indicator of it's supercharged are right here. Now, though it was really, everyone liked the aesthetics of it. So sometimes even not supercharged, they would just add them on. Uh, now, Ford really was the supercar of its day. And when you think about it, that's right after the Great Depression. So this car made extremely well, was made very wisely with each penny. Now, for instance, the car's already made, everything's been created. They realized that they are having a problem with the brakes overheating. It's windy. Uh, now, the brakes are overheating. With that, instead of redoing anything, they just cut, simply cut holes. American Roadster and the American Roadster really was the genesis for the 356 Speedster we would see later. Thank you. 